basically got to the point where uh, I was throwing up about 50 times a day, every single day, and literally in a place where I was dying. I went from 273 when I was a highly competitive strongman all the way down to 216 pounds. I'm throwing up 50 times a day, so my life is miserable. You're so upset. I can't tell you the number of times in the gym where literally I need to turn away because I start crying. Because uh, either it's so hard to have lost everything or I'm so grateful that I'm still here. How you guys doing? My name is Brian Aldrew. Um, I've actually been involved in lifting weights for about 25 years. Uh, was really a big part of my life through high school and college, like a lot of other people. Um, and then after college, I actually got recruited by the government to go and do counterterrorism for about 10 years, where I was running and gunning overseas and didn't spend a whole lot of time home. So it wasn't a lot of birthdays at home. It wasn't Christmases. I was kind of gone, right? I, I lost all my friends. I, that, that was my life. I decided that I didn't want to do that anymore, so I decided one day that I was going to quit doing that and I was going to open my own gym. So I ended up doing that, and in the process of doing that, I got involved in Strongman, and getting involved in Strongman was a big, massive movement in my life, not because of uh, the sport itself, but because it, it gave some sort of focus to my strength training. I was involved in mixed martial arts my whole life, and the strength training was always part of that, but Strongman actually took the focus onto the weights and the gym and things like that. So. Uh, that became a big part of my life, and through that, I got involved in YouTube, which got me involved with you, Mark Bell. So, um, I was doing really, really well in the strongman circuit. I was doing a couple things in the national championship type of level, so I'm like a national level type of competitor. Not super great, but not, not a nobody in the sport either. And uh, one day, I started getting sick. Like, one day, I just woke up and started feeling nauseous and ended up throwing up. That led to that kind of happening a couple times a week, which led to it happening every day. And it's led to a lot of testing. And eventually got to the point where uh, I was throwing up about 50 times a day, every single day, and literally in a place where I was dying. I went from 273 when I was a highly competitive strongman all the way down to 216 pounds. Uh, obviously dropped a ton of strength, a lot of weight, a lot of things. And of course, being a person who had strength and fitness and kind of being a bigger, stronger guy, you go in the room, you get noticed, you are a good performer in, in sports or pick up whatever. Like, it was part of my identity, you know what I mean? And all of that got stripped away when, when I got sick. Uh, there, was, there was literally nothing I could do and every single doctor looked at me and said, well, you're the healthiest dying person I know. It was a really, really dark time for me, not only the fact that I'm throwing up 50 times a day, so my life is miserable, you know what I mean? Like, that's miserable. There's, there's nothing to say about that. It's, it's a dark time. And then where your identity is, that gets stripped away. Uh, I was really emotionally not in a good spot and it just, it wasn't good. I just wasn't a good spot. And at that time, due to my YouTube page, uh, I was at the Arnold helping out Brian Shaw and uh, actually there with Arnold himself because of some athletes I work with. And uh, I had some downtime, so I came over to say hello to you because you and I have some past. So uh, we came over and you and I discussed some of the problems I was having and you actually got me introduced to Dr. Gabriel Lyon, who is a doctor out of New York City, who is a genius and works with nothing but special operations personnel, uh, Navy SEALs, Delta, Special Forces, those types of individuals. And um, regular doctors weren't used to seeing the type of symptoms that I had. So they were running certain tests and they were doing a great job for what they knew. However, it was just kind of like above their pay grade. When I walked into her, you gave me a text. I remember we left the Arnold and uh, I had to leave the Arnold early because I had a mini seizure. So after I spoke to Mark at the Arnold, I ended up having a mini seizure. Um, part of the condition that I was going on is when I would have a temperature change, uh, sometimes that temperature change would literally cause a seizure. So I was walking out of the convention center and people were coming up to say hi and stuff and I was locking up, it was terrible. Uh, I ended up crying on that little walkway that walked you back to like the Hilton. Uh, I was crying on that with my wife because I was so upset. I was like, this is what I want to do with my life. I, I want to be part of the fitness world. I want to help people. I want to talk to people and I can't do it. I'm dying and I don't know what to do. And uh, on that drive home, you had texted me. It was much later. Mark texted me and said, hey man, uh, are you throwing up this? Are you eating this? What are you doing? Just a couple of random questions. And they were very poignant. I could tell that you were doing research 
on what was going on and you were speaking to somebody else at the same time. So I kept getting texts with Mark throughout the entire night. And then he put me in contact with Gabriel Lyons, who is a doctor who works with nothing but the special operations personnel and saw a lot of the same symptoms that I had been dealing with because of my counter counterterrorism job. Now, a lot of people think it had to do with me eating something or drinking something. And literally all that happened was I was in, during that job, I had to spend a lot of time in countries that weren't the nicest, a lot of third world countries doing a lot of gross things, right? And uh, in that time, apparently I got in some water where these uh, kind of worms that attach to snails swim through your skin and then they kind of embed themselves and become a parasite. So that parasite apparently could have been living in my body literally for like decades. And I've had weird um, kind of health scares over top of the years, like uh, my kidneys stopped working at one time. This throwing up was just the latest thing and it actually be, ended up being a neurological problem uh, where these worms, it's a condition called systemiasis where 240,000 people a year in Africa alone die every year from this. So the sheer fact that I was live was very, very, very helpful, but I definitely was on the downward spiral of it all because the worms would breached my brain and the throwing up was kind of like a reflex. It wasn't good. So when Mark was texting me, it was very, very important. Uh, he was asking these poignant questions, but put me in contact with this doctor and Gabriel Lyons immediately recognized symptoms, literally had me diagnosed within 15 minutes. And I had gone two years of seeing doctors every single week, a new doctor, a new this, getting things stuck up my butt, getting stuck, things stuck down my throat, more needles stuck in me than I could do. Like the amount of tests that they ran on me and found nothing wrong. And this lady that Mark put me in contact with literally within minutes had me figured out. And so I had to make a trip to New York City and see a couple doctors where there were a couple really uncomfortable tests. Uh, and then after that, uh, they gave me some stuff, a couple pills that literally cost like 50 cents. And now I don't have worms anymore and I'm coming back out of it. Went from 216, now I'm around like 230. Um, back when I was healthy, uh, squatting 750, deadlifting 750, those were like, those were very, very important to me. They were like regular things. It was just part of my life was lifting heavy. That seemed like a huge, massive deal. You know what I mean? That's what my identity was. If I had a bad day in the gym, it affected the rest of my life. I was not a good person to be around when I didn't have a good day at the gym. Um, going through the entire thing really changed who I was mentally as a person. Definitely matured me a lot and taught me about priorities, but also, <laughs> It just made me realize like what truly is important and that time's gonna win. You know, like my biceps eventually are no longer gonna be my biceps. My deadlift's no longer gonna be my deadlift. And if I'm not working on other things in the gym, then I'm kind of wasting my time. And uh, this whole situation has just been such a world changing thing. Now when I lift, I have good days and I have bad days. I still have a lot of symptoms from the worms. There's some days I go in and I have a lot of nerve damage from the worm. So I'll go in to like do a pressing day and I'll think I'm having a great day until I get to like my fourth set and it gets shut down. It's like the finger of God is like, not today and no longer I have a day. So I need to find ways before where I get real mad, pretty much stomp out of the gym and have a bad day the rest of the day. Now I need to find ways to recover that workout somehow. So now maybe it's not about, maybe I'm supposed to go for a big triple. Now it's not about that. Now it's about getting a pump or conditioning or whatever else the case may be, but it's it's always about going in the gym and just trying to figure out ways to get better. Now my strength is coming back and that's awesome. And that makes me feel good about myself. My size come back a little bit. That makes me feel good about myself. But like, it's really, it's just about figuring out a different way to challenge myself every single day in the gym. And sometimes that's strength, but sometimes it's just figuring a way to get better. Strength's a skill and it doesn't always have to do with being heavy or going balls to wall. Sometimes it's about, you know, working your technique or just literally getting through another set because you're so upset. I can't tell you the number of times in the gym where literally I need to turn away because I start crying. Because uh, either it's so hard to have lost everything or I'm so grateful that I'm still here and that I can still do it, you know? And uh, it's, it's a strange place, it's a different place than I got into this and got involved. And uh, it's a place I never thought I'd be. And uh, my world that I went from watching Mark Bell on Super Train Channel and trying to learn from him. And now I'm sitting in the gym talking to him about like a life or death situation. Literally, I could potentially not be here if I would not have run into Mark at the Arnold. And he was kind enough to share his world and say, 
hey, this is a lady that I know that might be able to help you out. She was able to help me out. Like, I could be dead. Like, my wife wouldn't have a husband. My parents wouldn't have a kid. Like, it's not about deadlifts. It's about, like, uh, it's just about being better, you know? I'd be dead without my wife. Um, not only because she, uh, she makes me do the things I don't want to do. I'm afraid of needles, right? I was afraid of needles. Uh, and through this whole process, I'm not afraid of needles anymore because I've had to give myself needles every single day. There was a time when I got a bone marrow infection from all of this and had to sit on my couch and give myself four needles a day, four IVs a day, every day for two months. I tell you what, enough doctors tell you you're dying. We can't help you. You believe it. You walk away and you're like, that's it. This is my lot. This is what I got dealt. It's cool. I'm going to go skydiving. Cool. I'm out. Right. And you learn to accept it. Right. You get really angry and really upset. But like you realize that that's it. Right. And my wife was always there to be like, no, stupid. I want you like go, you know. And then uh, number two, when I say it got dark, I mean, I didn't feel like I had anything to live for. Like not only did I lose my identity and stuff, but like when you wake up, uh, I would at 3 a.m. I, I would I would not wake up feeling nauseous. I would wake up throwing up all over myself. I didn't feel like I had a life to live, and I felt like the life that I was living was not worthy of anything. And uh, there were a lot of times. There were a lot of times. You know what I mean? Like I don't need to say it. Everyone knows it, right? Like everyone knows. Uh, it's dark. It's a, it's a dark place, and there's a lot of people. Maybe, maybe they're not throwing up 50 times a day, but maybe they go to school and get bullied, or maybe they have arthritis in their hands and it hurts, or maybe their wife doesn't like them, or whatever. Everyone's got something, right? No one's special. Everyone's got something. My dad's too old. I'm too fat. He's too this. She's too that. Everyone's got something, right? And you don't know, but everyone's working through that. And being able to go in the gym and work through that and have a support system, not only from the people in the gym and a good family there, but have a wife that actually supported me was so huge. And actually when I didn't want to go and I was like, I'm too sick, I'm gonna throw up all the time. She's like, go do something, go do something. Like you're being lazy. Like, you know what I mean? Like literally she'd be interrupting me, throwing up being like, you have to go do something. Like, I know you feel terrible, but you need to go move. Like, what are you gonna do? You're just gonna waste away and die. Are you giving up? What is it? So like, man, yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't have made it. I wouldn't have. When I did my old job, I had to have a gun on me 24 seven. Had a gun on me all of the time. And uh, was drinking too much, was in a bad place for different reasons with that job. Like a lot of guys get in a bad place with that job, right? And I thought about it there, but I had access. And people who have access to guns kill themselves all the time. Cops, military, cause it's easy, right? You make a split second decision, it's done. Uh, if I still had my gun, I would not be having this conversation. I, I can't tell you how many times, like my brain was like, what are you offering? Like, what, what is this? And honestly, you guys know how being nauseous is, right? It's miserable. You can't, getting up to walk from this seat to that chair over there is miserable. You go, oh, and that's everything, every day whether it's getting up to go to the bathroom or go to the store or drive or make a video or talk. Like, you don't even want to talk to people when you're nauseous. Someone's like, hi, and you're like, you can go to hell. Like, I hate you right now. Not because of anything you're saying, because I feel so miserable, you know what I mean? I can't tell you the number of times when you looked at it as a whole, you wake up in the morning and you're like, I'm gonna throw up 50 times a day. Uh, probably gonna, there's gonna be blood in that. It's gonna be miserable. Like, you're gonna have embarrassment. There's, your day's gonna be terrible. And this is gonna go on until you die. So you can either speed it up or you could say, just make it through one more minute, make it through one more hour, get through one more workout, one more set, one more whatever it was. And that's always what it was. Go to one more doctor. Like maybe this one will be the one that has some answers. Maybe that one will be the one. And like, it frustrates me when people, people a lot of times will email me and say like, man, like I don't have the motivation to like go in and work out anymore. I'm like, now, I work with people with like cerebral palsy and people have lost their legs and lost their arms all the time. That's my gym's full of those people. And I'm like, those people getting it done all the time. Me in a much less situation, throwing up 50 times a day, I'm getting it done. I don't know what you're complaining about other than it's too easy, right? Like your life's too easy, so you're seeing the wrong things. So that's what you're focused on. I think a little bit of, of suffering could really enhance a lot of people's lives in a good way. 
in my old job when things got hard, when we had to do like tests or selects, or you hear guys going through like special force selects and things, everyone always talks about it. It's about that one minute decision. Like quitting is an easy decision that everyone makes in one second. You decide that it's not worth it anymore and you quit. And then three minutes later you go, why did I quit? Why did I give in? It seems so terrible then, but the second you got a little bit, just a little bit of a break, you're like, and what you need to learn is that little break is in your head, right? That was mental. You didn't get a ton better in three minutes. You literally just decided to stop the pain for a little bit, but if you can learn to live in that pain. So if you would have told me that I was gonna throw up 50 times a day, I would have told you you're looking at dead man walking. My best day throwing up 50 times a day is still probably easier than a dude who doesn't have arms or legs. And he gets through it. People get through stuff, man. It's, I have no reason to complain, none. But literally in my gym, we throw out people who complain because when you see someone literally squatting without legs or deadlifting without legs and figuring out a way around it, and someone comes in and goes, my job's hard, uh, you say, you need to leave because you don't have perspective, bottom line, you know? I'd say I'm at about 60%. You've seen a couple of my lists recently, I'm getting better. Uh, but I'd say I'm probably at about 60, 65%. I would like to get better faster, but my problem is that part of my body, like my lower body is still coming back very fast, but my upper body isn't coming back quite as fast. So uh, I'll get kind of rambunctious and I'll get a little excited and then I'll pull something in my back and then it'll set me back a couple weeks. I'll do like a two weeker, won't be able to really get out there for a couple weeks and need to drop back. So it's a lot of that right now. It's very, it undulates. I'm like, I'll feel really good. I just squatted 710, deadlifted 675, feel good. Next week I might be benching 135. I don't know, you know what I mean? So, um, and I've learned to accept that. There was a time in my life when if I wasn't constantly progressing, it felt really, really bad, you know? But now I'm like, it's a, it's a journey. I'm gonna be doing this the rest of my life. I just, Today might be a good day, today might be a bad day, but I'm gonna to make today a good day no matter what. I'm gonna find a way to make today a good day. Like dying isn't that big of a deal. There are a lot worse things in the world than dying, a lot worse, right? And I'm like, if you're gonna face it, you might as well face it well. And everyone wasn't going to let me be like a little like poopy pants about it. Like every, everyone jumped all over me the entire time. So it was cool. Everyone was very understanding and, and caring. And there were times when like, literally I would, I would, I would literally have to like leave work. I'd be in the middle of coaching and be like, it's not gonna stop, I need to leave. And would jump in my car, try to drive away, had to stop my car and be puking out all over myself. It was horrendous, right? And those those would happen sometimes. And if you don't treat that lightly, like what are you gonna do? Like they're looking at their coach going, our coach is dying, our friend is dying. And I'm <laughs> I'm looking at myself going, I'm dying. So there's nothing to do but then to, to make jokes. Like it's just like the guys without arms and legs, we joke about them not having arms and legs. Like if I had to be careful because when people visit my gym, we'll say some things much like you guys, I'm sure there's like inside talk where everyone in the gym knows what's going on, right? You're making a joke about someone not having arms. Someone outside could get offended, but that person knows you're their brother and they're laughing, you know what I mean? Like, so everyone just treats whatever bad thing they have going on. It's, it's, it's something to pick apart. It's not something to, to whine about.